Hey ho folks, it is straight up two o'clock. <coughs> straight up two o'clock, at least where I live. Um, this is Nick McPhee. This is Unhindered by Coding, round two for the day. Uh, be here for two hours writing code. Um, in Rust, uh, in this session, we'll be looking at the segmented file system client um, that we last looked at back in late September because of all the um, various confusions of October. Um, so it's been a month, um, exactly, uh, since we last looked at this. Um, so I'll explain a little bit of what, what the problem is so we all remember what's going on. Um, and then where we are, and I think we'll be able to make some pretty good progress on this today. So what is it? What is the problem we're trying to solve? Um, we have, let's see if we go here, um, and we go here. Um, so we have this, we have a UDP server that already exists and we contact it and it gives us a whole bunch of packets. So it sends over UDP a big flood of packets and there are two kinds of packets. There are header packets and data packets and they have a certain structure and we've dealt with that already. Um, so we have code that parses these packets um, and extracts the relevant information from them um, so let's see if we go to here, packets, um, we have, uh, a packet enum, which is either a header packet or a data packet and a header packet contains header stuff and a data packet contains data stuff. And, um, we have, um, try from implemented on a uh, slice of bytes, U8s, um, <clears throat> that turns that slice of U8s into a packet. Um, and we have to look at the first uh, byte of the packet to decide if it's a header or not. Um, and that is in the specification, so the status byte tells us whether it's a header packet or a data packet. Um, and so depending on that, we construct a header packet or a data packet from uh, the bytes that we have. And so there's uh, another couple of try from uh, impl implementations down below, one for header and one for data. And they basically take this slice of bytes and pick apart the bits inside um, and put them in the relevant fields. So if we come back up to header, uh, let's see where, oh, header has a file ID and a name is all it has in it. And data has a file ID, a packet number, a Boolean indicating whether it's the last packet for the file that it's part of, and then a vector of bytes, which is the data in that packet. So we're getting all these packets. That actually works. We got all that done. All this parsing is happy camper land. Um, and we can, in fact, connect to the server and receive a pile of packets. Um, so we can connect uh, here uh, to a remote address, which is currently just hard coded in as local host on a given port. We can set up a buffer of bytes <clears throat> and 1028 is the right size for this buffer. <clears throat> and that's in the problem specification. The largest amount of data that we can get is 1024. And the largest number of sort of header bytes or uh, yeah, header bytes, you know, information bytes at the front is four bytes for a data packet. So 1028 is enough space to hold any header or data packet that we'll receive. We send an empty buffer to the server. It doesn't have to have anything in it. The server, if it just receives a packet of any sort, any UDP packet, it's like, oh, you want stuff. And then it just sends stuff at you. Um, uh, so we send basically this empty packet 
And then we have an infinite loop, um, which we'll have to like make a not infinite loop um, at some point um, that uh, receives a buffer full of information from the uh, server and uh, dot res um, returns len, which is how many bytes did we actually get? Um, so when we receive a buffer full, it might not be a full buffer. We might not get all 1028 bytes. We might get 32 bytes or 87 bytes. It doesn't really matter. And they'll usually be full bytes, but the last, either a short file, a file that's less than 1024 bytes, won't send a full packet. <clears throat> and a big file, the last packet for that file is probably not going to be full um, unless that file size is an exact multiple of 1024, which is unlikely. Uh, <clears throat> so Len tells us how much we actually got. And that's used right here to sort of slice out the part of the buffer that actually matters. Um, and we call try into to convert this data into a packet. Um, and so that gives, gives us a packet. Um, and we print the parse packet. And this part all works. So if we go to the terminal and in the repository, um, I have a, in um, Java server lib lib, there is this jar file that is an, an implementation of the server written in Java. Um, and we can run that. Oh, and actually before I do that, it will, whenever it's contacted, it will send out these three files, which are, um, as you like it, is actually the full text of the Shakespeare play, as you like it. Um, and that's, uh, 133,000 bytes. So it's going to be some number of packets, not, huge numbers of packets, but definitely several packets, a few hundred or over a hundred. Um, Binary.jpg is a photograph. And so that's actually going to be, in Java, that's rather tricky. You have to be careful not to ever treat the data as text because then you'll lose the eighth bit or corrupt the eighth bit on every byte. And then your picture is a mess. In Rust, I think this is going to be a nothing burger. It won't be any different to treat the... We won't have to do anything special because we're just using um, slices of U8s everywhere. And so we never inadvertently convert to text, whereas students often uh, try to convert to text because they're sort of used to using uh, readers and writers in Java. And so they tend to try to make text out of things. But in Rust, we'll just have arrays and it'll be swell. Um, and then um, small is literally just a very small file. Um, uh, small. Yeah. So that fits in one um, packet. It's no big deal. So if we start the server, Java, and then we cargo run here, uh, this is going to grab, I'll kill it because watching this go forever is boring. So this is just getting packet after packet after packet. And there are, I think this, these three files together end up being 400 and something packets if I remember correctly. Um, so it just grabs packets and we see that it is parsing the packets correctly. So we have a file ID, we have a packet number. We have whether it's the last packet and we have the array of data um, and we just have this over and over and over again. Notice that the packet numbers and the packets are completely randomized. So part of the deal here is UDP doesn't promise that packets will arrive in the same order that they're sent. Um, and so part of the challenge for the students is that we deliberately shuffle the uh, packets so that they come at you in quite random order. So we generate all the packets on the server, completely shuffle them, and then send them out 
So they don't come grouped by file. They don't come in order within a file. Um, so this is file ID one and packet 325. The next one was file ID D2 and packet 61. The previous one was file ID2 and packet 73. So you get them in this completely random order. And then part of the problem, which is what we'll work on today, is collecting the packets, putting them in the right files, getting them in the right order, and then ultimately writing them out to the disk um, using the name that we had received. Um, so we are we've got the packets parsed and um, notice the server did say, hey, got a request, um, and I handled that. Um, so I think the infrastructure is all there. The packet parsing, which we did before, I think is in good shape. And now we just have to do something with these packets beyond just um, uh, print them out, which isn't very helpful. So, so that's what we're going to work on today, um, is taking the packets and doing something with them. And so what, how, what are we going to do here? We're going to get a lot of packets and we need for each packet, we need to decide which file it's part of and put it in some data structure that's related, that, that holds the stuff specific to that file. So it seems like we're going to want some kind of file, uh, so we probably don't want to call it file because we call it file that's going to be potentially confusing with the OS notion of a file. Um, uh, so we could call it file packets maybe. Um, and that's going to be a collection. Oh. Yeah, I think we could do that. Um, file packets, that's going to hold all the packets for a single file. And then we're going to have to have some way of deciding like, hey, where does this packet go? We could do that right in here, but I'm inclined to actually create a packet manager that we hand these packets to and say, hey, do something with them. And it will then figure out which file that packet's associated with and sort of put it in that piece. Um, and uh, a complication is that we, we don't know when we received all of the packets until all of the last packets have been seen. Um, and those could come early, they could come late. Again, everything's scrambled. So you might get the, the first three packets could be the last packet from each of the three files. Or they could be at the end, or more likely they're scattered around. Um, and uh, so we need some way of like saying, hey, are we done? And we only know if we're done, if we've seen the last packet for every file. And at the moment, that requires making assumptions about how many files there are. Um, because there's nothing in the information we receive that tells us how many files we have. And uh, so we can't, let's say we've received all of the data for our three files. We can't tell the difference between we're done and we just happen to have gotten everything for files one, two, and three, and we're gonna get packets for file four in a second and they just haven't started arriving yet. We can't tell the difference between those two things. So the, the assignment, that we're basically implementing um, assumes that, that um, hello is it to um, that there are exactly three files. Um, that's actually not a great assumption. I'm not thrilled by that. And it would probably make sense to have like some other metadata packet somewhere that tells us how many packets are coming, um, I mean, how many files are coming. Um, actually, it would be nice if it also told us how many packets, but let's not get that carried away. Um, but if it told us how many files we were gonna get, we'd know um, how to handle that. 
but we'll just cook in an assumption of three files. So um, I'm going to have this. We're going to create a packet manager. Um, I mean, a file manager. And that needs to happen outside the loop. Um, so let file manager equal file manager new. And then we're going to for each pack. Oh, and that's going to need to be mute because we're going to modify it file manager dot add packet or we'll say process packet it's better I think packet so that's the general structure and then this loop is gonna need is gonna look like file file manager dot um, so we can ask the file manager if we've received all packets um, received all packets so while that's not true then we'll grab a buffer convert it to a packet probably don't need that well I'll leave that there for now we'll get rid of it later um, convert it to a packet send it to the file manager to process come back up to the top and then presumably if the file manager does the right thing um, we will uh, it will tell us when we've gotten everything and then at the end we'll have to have say file manager dot write all files so some that that's the sort of structure i'm imagining um and obviously the this um type doesn't exist yet so none of these methods exist yet and you know, we're gonna have to do all that but you know one thing at a time right so let's start by implementing file manager um and if you got any questions along the way holler um i'll probably move a little faster on this than on some of the certainly on the the ice repos project because i actually sort of know what's going on and i've written this in java at least in the past and i've watched a zillion students write this in java over the years um so I'm a lot more comfortable with this than I am with some of the other things, you know, especially in ICE repos. So I'll probably move pretty quickly. Um, so definitely holler if you're like, what is going on? Um, okay, so uh, we're gonna need to have PubMod file manager and we'll need to create a file uh, file manager rs and then we'll have struct file manager boom 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 and that i think will oh and then we'll have to import that it's like I've never heard of that um, oh and I don't know if I said pub on that no I didn't pub struct oh ah, no come on pub struct file manager now now I think we can import we uh, and let's make this a little less of a huge long line uh, <clears throat> and then uh, we need to create a new so impulse file manager pub fun new return self um, I'm just going to do it to do bang on this for now. Let's sort of put to do bangs in everywhere until we get it to compile. 
Um, so then we need receive all packets. Pub fun received all packets returns a boolean and that's a to do and then why are we grumpy still oh oh I did um oh it's yes so it needs to take a reference to self yeah okay that's better there and then we need process packets pub fun is that did i actually make that plural no it's singular okay good process packet Take a reference to self and packet of type packet and return nothing. And we have to import packet. Yeah, okay. Um, now here, we've got a result so packets actually a result here and not a packet um so we're gonna have to figure out how we want to handle the errors here the moment we're returning io result which basically is nothing or a an io error of some sort um and uh why is this complaining oh because this doesn't return anything at the moment it doesn't return an io result so that probably actually writing the files probably should be async so we could even do that and then that can return an io error and that makes all the awaits happy so we still have this issue if we receive a packet and it doesn't parse so we get a packet parse error there's probably no point in continuing i mean if we wanted to be fancy we could do something and say well that packet being corrupted is bad, but maybe the other two files, so that'll take out one of the files, but maybe the other two files could be um, still salvaged. Um, I don't think I'm gonna bother with that. I think I'm going to just assume that if things are bad, we will, um, fail and end right away so in the same way that we do here and here and here and here if any of those things fail then we'll just quit so i think this probably needs to just quit as well so the simple thing to do would be put a question mark but that's not going to work because um oh and actually i explicitly put this so really we want this to be a packet um oh that did work really uh i'm a little surprised by that i would have thought this was going to return the wrong kind of error Maybe this is hiding it. I don't know. Let's put this in and we'll see if that still works. Pub fun. Write all files and self uh, to do bang. And now this is not a way, so we need to make the 
function async. So pub async. Is that the order? I think. Um, aha. Yes. And now this doesn't work because we're not returning something. So um, write all files doesn't return anything. Um, and the question mark can only be applied to things that implement try. Uh, <clears throat> so there's got to be the possibility that the file manager returns an error. Um, so this would return result nothing or IO error probably. Um, uh, oh, we could return an IO result. That's what we want. Mm -mm -mm. IO result. Boom. So that, oh, and we need to import some stuff. Quick fix. And that's the right IO. So we can, that way, if we have any IO errors, we can return them in that result. Otherwise, we'll return nothing because there isn't anything to return from this, but it allows us to manage the error. So that's nice. Um, now, why are you grumpy? Expected enum result found unit type. Rar? I thought we just fixed that. Because this returns a result, right? Yeah. What is your fussiness? I'm a little confused. Expected a result that found a unit type. What is this? A f but our write all files return something. Da <laughs> Oh, I get it. Yeah, thank you, Izitsu. Saving the day, as always. The question mark is getting rid of the result part. That's the mistake. Uh, and the quick fix would have actually taken care of that. So if we put it back, and it was trying to tell me that. Um, yeah, so, okay. It was telling me exactly what we wanted, to, what I needed to hear. I just wasn't able to hear it. Um, so write all files does return this, but the question mark extracts the value out of it or returns the error value panics with that error. Um, and so by putting the question mark on it, the value of this became the unit type. And that's exactly what it was telling me. And I was too dumb to see it. And that isn't what I want. So really what I want is that. Because now if this were to return, if this returns a file, an error, we'll just send it up. Things will panic. It'll be bad um, in the right way. So you prefer, so you prefer putting an okay after this. Oh, so then this still sends it up and then this is more parallel to these other instances of a white question mark hmm that actually makes sense okay i'll buy that 
Um, so here the question mark says, you know, die if something bad happened. Um, otherwise continue and continue in this case is like, we're good. But then if we wanted to put some other stuff after this, for some reason, we would still be executing here um, between these two things. So we could add additional execution. Um, and we wouldn't be assuming that we were returning the unit that this returns. That actually makes sense. I like that. Good suggestion. Thank you, Isitsu. And now we have the error that I was expecting here, which is that um, we are getting um, a packet parse error uh, from this, but we can only return an IO error. And so we have an issue. The simple solution would just be these map error to take us from a packet parse error to an IO error. Um, the more complicated solution would be to create a kind of super error type that is either an IO error or a packet parse error, and then have this return that sort of super type. Um, I think we've gone to the trouble of having some nice packet parse error action. So we distinguish between an incomplete packet and a file name parse error. I don't know that I'd want to throw that away um, because then the user won't ever see that information if something you know interesting comes of it. Oh, sorry. So I think we actually want to deal with this probably more gracefully. So I think that we want to create a struct um, uh, client error. No, no, that's a great name. And so we've got um, a packet parse error that will have a packet parse error in it um, or uh, an IO error that will have an IO error in it. And what does that, what is that actual type? Uh, so standard IO error. So that. And since we have, since we're using that, I guess we could just say this. Why are we yelling? Oh, these are fields. Oh, this is supposed to be an enum. What am I doing? Um, oh, so that's a possibility would be to use anyhow and sort of learn how that works. And why are you grumpy? Oh, enum you know, declarations are not followed by semicolons. Yes, I knew that. Um, oh, and error stack had an update. I haven't actually been tracking that, so that's worth knowing. So we used error stack in a different project, um, and it was nice. Uh, it was a lot of, there was a lot there, um, but it was nice. Um, and it was, there were some suggestions that, um, alternatives like anyhow might be worth exploring. Um, and so we could do that. Let's see. Wasn't what I was thinking of going today. Rust anyhow. But um, let's 
So So we would need to have our errors implement this error trait. Um, <laughs> Do I want to get into this right now? You know, I don't, I think I'm going to say that's a maybe for later. Um, chance to explore an alternative error handling system like anyhow because um, I think that we're not going to have that much going on um, uh, and I should also make a note to um, come on behave Oh, that's why you're not behaving. Um, look into updates to error stack. Um, I think this isn't that complicated. Um, I think that, so if I think here, let's see. Uh, receive all packets, I don't expect will need to have any interesting error handling um, process packet could actually have an error so there could be some interesting error handling in this actually that might make it worth doing something fancier this will just be IO errors so I think for the moment I'm gonna like press on with just something simpler here um, and we will um, uh, uh, client error, maybe come back to the error handling uh, in a little bit. So then we need to implement some uh, impl uh, from for, oh, so from, uh, I O error for client error, and then we'll have a fun from E of type standard I O error, and we'll return a client error. And we'll do that by returning an IO error. Oh, it's a client. Client error, IO error, um, E. Boop, bop. So that should take care of that. Impl from std IO error. And I presume that one of the things that things like anyhow would get do for us is reduce this kind of bo boilerplate from business. Um, oh, I don't want this shouldn't be standard error. This should be packet parse error or client error Thin from e packet parse error to well, I guess technically it's recommended that this be self packet parser e that would make this self also yeah and then now oh and we need to uh, implement debug so we can print things uh, awesome so all this compiles now we um, 
So yeah, so this way these IO errors will automatically be converted into client errors and the packet parse error generated here will automatically be turned into a packet uh, client error. Uh, and so we'll return either a client error or the unit and we're in good shape. So, Coolio. Um, now, basically, we got to do something about all of this. So, if we're going to have three files, we need three file packet collector thingies. And I don't have a great name for that. Um, I mean, it feels like file is the right name. Um, so maybe, but I think that, that's going to conflict with uh, when we get there. Uh, writing to files. Um, but, you know, maybe we just provide full namespaces for things and we can keep track of whether we're in the file manager or um, the file thingy. Well, I'll call them files for now. We won't run into it until we get down to write all files anyway. So it gives us a little headroom. Um, so we're going to need three file No, I still, I just saying, saying it out loud becomes awkward. Um, maybe we, maybe there are three packet groups or packet sets. Maybe that's the way to think about it. So there'll be three packet sets. Well, maybe I like that better. So let's try that. Packet sets. So we're going to need to have three packet sets. Well, we could just have packet set A, packet set B, and packet set C, which are terrible names, right? That's not a good sign. Um, it's also complicated because the file number isn't guaranteed to be any particular values. Um, they have to be between 0 and 255 because we only use one byte for a, um, a file number. Um, uh, wonderful to see you again, C Films. Thank you very much. Um, I'm glad you're doing well. Um, so I think that because we don't, like we could have, if we knew that they were going to be 0, 1, 2 for the file numbers, we could just have an array of these packet groups. Um, but we don't know that. So I think we're going to have a map. I think we'll have a hash map that goes from um, uh, U8 to packet group. Yeah, we'll call it a packet group. Um, and then I'm actually, do I want packet group to be in here? Nah, packet group probably should be its own thing. So uh, let's add pub mod packet group. And can this actually create, ah, there we go. How nice. Um, that means there's going to be a packet group. There it is. Hop, tickety. Um, and so we better define struct, a pub struct, packet group. Okay. And now we better import that. Okay. Um, is the Rust language I code the most in? 
Over my lifetime, absolutely not. But that's just because I'm old and Rust isn't that old. Um, but uh, that's sort of not a helpful answer. Um, but it's sort of weird. Like over the last six months, absolutely. Because it's kind of almost everything I've programmed has been in Rust in the last six months. Because I've been, since late May, I've been focusing on learning Rust. So in late May, I really didn't know very much Rust at all. Um, now I'm borderline competent. I mean, I don't know that I would be first choice to get hired, um, but I could probably be productive. Um, but that's really just in the last six months. Um, his, you know, in recent history, I've probably written most of my code in Clojure, Java, Rust, bits of Python, bits of Ruby, occasionally little bits of C, but very rarely, um, and only under great duress, um, and Scheme, or Racket, actually. we Racket's one of the things we use in our introductory. One of the introductory courses uses Racket, which is a descendant of Scheme, which is a descendant of Lisp. Um, so that's also something I've used a fair bit because of courses. So I, I think that would be what I have been using the most in the last, let's say the last decade, um, to keep it simpler. I mean, there, there was a time when I was a pretty competent C++ programmer, like in the 90s. I was probably hireable as a C++ programmer. Um, but I would be useless now. It's been so long. I haven't written any meaningful C++ code in two decades. Um, so, mm, I totally left out JavaScript and TypeScript. I have written more code than I want to think about in TypeScript. Um, and some pure JavaScript. Mostly it's been in the context of Angular, so um, it's mostly been TypeScript, but I have written a reasonable amount of JavaScript as well. Um, I have used PHP back in the day. I haven't touched PHP in maybe 15 years. Um, so I would be pretty rusty there. And I know my way around SQL and a few other database setups. Like um, I've used Elasticsearch. I've used uh, MongoDB. I've used DynamoDB in AWS. So a variety of things. Um, uh, so yeah. That would be the short version of uh, what I've been doing programming stuff in, in a while, at least. Um, OK, so, um, so we have map. And so here we're going to want to make one of these. So file manager um, hash map. Well, that really ought to be self, I guess. Self. Oh, and it's map colon. Map. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is my favorite language to currently develop in? Mm, I mean, actually Rust, probably. Um, there's a lot I like about Rust. I think Rust and, and Clojure are probably my two favorites. Um, but in wildly different ways. And um, I'm certainly coming to the conclusion, mostly based on the evolution computation sessions on Wednesday nights, that performance-wise, there is just no competition. Rust is killing closure from a performance perspective. We're pretty, we're looking at, <laughs> that's, that's funny, I like that. Um, it looks like we're getting a close to a thousand fold improvement in performance with Rust. And man, that's a hard thing to argue against. So there are aspects of Rust I find a little frustrating. Well, there's a lot that I'm still confused about because I'm still learning it and it's a complicated thing. But um, there are occasionally bits there. You get out into the edges and it gets kind of weird um, in places. But 
man, I, I feel like I've learned a ton by learning Rust, and I suspect that I'll use it a lot, at least in the near future. And we'll see. Um, and the PHP has changed a ton since I last dealt with it. Um, I know they fixed a lot of the security problems that um, I remember being real issue when I was dealing with it back in the day. Um, so uh, that, I, th I think, I, I'm not in a position to really say anything meaningful about PHP because I think it has changed so much since I last used it. But I'm glad it works for you. That's awesome. Um, okay. So, um, so we've got uh, our map. Um, and we really, this should never have more than three things in it. And I don't know a simple way to um, eh, maybe I don't care. Maybe I'll let it go. Um, uh, we'll just leave that like that is. Um, so a hash map um, is common. I'm so, there must be something similar in PHP. Um, pretty much it's like a dictionary in Python if you I think or actually it's sort of like a um, an object in JavaScript. Um, so it maps from keys to values. So in Rust, we have to specify both of those types. So we're mapping from unsigned bytes to packet groups, which I haven't really implemented yet. Um, and in this case, the, um, uh, the key will be a file ID and the value will be the associated packet group. So this is going to keep track of, for each file ID, um, we will be able to look up the packet group associated with that file ID, and we'll be able to add things to it as we find them. Um, we could also do things like removing them and other stuff, but we don't care about any of that right now. And we'll need something like a hash map, but um, we'll want some sorting properties. Uh, and I don't know, we'll have to look and see if there's like a sorted hash map um, to use to manage the packets within a packet group. Because if we can keep them sorted by packet number, then we'll avoid having to sort them at the end. They'll just sort themselves as we add them. And that would be kind of cool. Um, so hopefully that made sense and was helpful. Um, so received all packets. We basically just need to uh, confirm that there are three um, uh, map.size? No, map dot keys come on give me some help why do you not oh it's self dot map duh. that's why size keys dot size oh it's len this is different language so this needs to be three. Um, yeah, I like Code Wars. Actually, I think Code Wars is a, I, it's a terrible name because it makes it sound really competitive. And it really, they sort of went, I think they, they pivoted to a direction that was way less competitive. And I would have liked, it's a shame that they, you know, I mean, I, I get why they didn't change the name because branding and yada yada. But I think that the name and the, the, um, reality have drifted apart and I think that's too bad but I like Code Wars as a thing um, if you like, if you're interested in learning more about Rust I highly recommend the Rustlings um, exercises I think these are actually really well written and I learned a ton from doing those I don't think they're perfect. I think there are things that 
could be improved um more, more added i think there are some gaps and some places where the organization's a little weird but in general i learned a ton from doing those and i think they're really a excellent way to learn rust um and i wish more uh languages had more communities had built things like that that were as well thought out as that one i mean a lot of communities have learning tools for their language but i found that to be probably one of the most well structured and helpful um that i've ever run into which i thought was cool so and i am i think as nick mcphee on code wars if that's useful hey wagafa wonderful to see you again um always a pleasure so when have we received all the packets? We've received all the packets when we've seen all three files. So we have to actually check that the map has length three. If we don't do that, then we could end up thinking we're done because we've seen all of the packets associated with one file or two files. Um, and wow, that's a lot. That's way more than me. Um, uh, one file or two files but not seeing any of the packets for the third file and so that would be bad so we need to check that um, so if that's true and we need to know that every that we've seen the last packet on oh no we've seen all the packets for each packet group so we need to ask each packet group hey have you seen all of your packets um and so i feel like we ought to be able to do that with some kind of iterator thing so self dot map dot we don't really care about the values we care about the keys but we don't care about the keys we care about the values and what is that values returns a an iterator okay and then um is there some kind of like each or every all all did that do the right thing ha ha test if every element matches a predicate exactly what i wanted um yeah i'm certainly have not trained on 46 languages but there are also languages i know that i've never bothered doing anything with code wars with and there's also languages i've done stuff on code wars with that yeah i wouldn't claim to know so you know um so for every uh um for every packet group so we need a closure here for every packet group we want to ask if it has received all packets and so if we've seen all three of them and all three of them say that they have received all the packets then we are done and that's cool um so we need to add received all packets to packet group um impl pack the packet group uh pub fun received all packets self fool to do bang okay cool that works um yeah i like i haven't really seriously done code wars on anything i've poked at it in a variety of ways but i've not you know spent lots of time on it um i can imagine actually a stream that's like doing problems like that um uh i think people you know would be short and self-contained there are people that would probably like that but um right now i've got sort of bigger things to do so i'm working on them um so that so we make the file manager um so i'm gonna make a note that we have to check that we've seen all three files and that each 
file is done, i.e. we've received all of the packets for that file. Okay. Um, see, I like math problems, so that, like, I really like um, Euler, Project Euler. Not that I've ever really put much time into it, but I like the kind of pro Project Euler problems because I, I was a math major as an undergraduate, and I'm still kind of a reconstructed mathematician. Um, but uh, again, I don't spend a lot of time on pro on those kinds of things during my regular life because it would just take up too much time. And normally when I'm teaching, I don't have that much time. Um, and so it's one of the nice things about sabbaticals. I can do this, but I want to be sort of focused about it. Um, and I think I've reached a point where writing actual things in Rust is more useful than doing exercises in Rust. So um yeah um that's a that's a great point and actually project euler does suffer somewhat for that there are problems where the real thing is to learn some math and then figure out how to like write that math in your language of choice um which isn't necessarily a programming problem at that point so yeah good point um and that was one of the things I really liked about Rustlings. It was very focused and it was very specifically focused on features of Rust in an organized way that made sense. And so I felt like I learned things in a structured way. Um, so I liked that. Okay, so process packet. We need to figure out which file that we have so file ID is packet dot um, hmm, we don't seem to have much about packets packets don't know how to return their file ID well that's fascinating um, so we need to fix that okay um, so let's assume it for the moment. Um, and that's going to fail. So we need to fix that. So packet, so impl packet, pub fun, file ID, self. Um, Now, th so well, Goffin, is it to might be able to help me out here? Both header and data have a file ID field. And packet itself is just an enum that doesn't have anything. So I presumably can't do something like self dot file ID. Oh, no, that's just myself. That that's the function I'm writing. So I, I can't access that field because that field doesn't exist in packet. So do I have to actually do a, a match? And in both cases, just return file ID or, uh, uh, yeah, file ID from that packet. That seems kind of weird. Um, so match, uh, packet. I want to match self actually. And if self is header, header, then I return header.file ID. Otherwise, if self is data, data, 
I return data dot file ID. And that didn't work. Oh, it's packet colon colon header. And it hates me. Um, expected unit, but found U8. Uh, oh, this is supposed to return a U8. So that's my bad. Okay, so that takes care of that. So that's that seems a little gross to have to repeat that. And there's not a way to have like substructs. Like you can't have a struct and then have another struct be an extension of that struct. I'm pretty sure I've looked that up before. And, and I think it's my inheritance brain from Java, et cetera, that makes me think, kind of think that way, um, that there's this shared aspect for header packets and data packets. And here I can't actually do that sharing because Rust just doesn't allow that to happen. Um, well, we'll live. Um, so, yeah, that's true. So packet could be a struct that has a file ID and then we could have a packet enum, which is the um, the header versus the data part of the rest of it. That's what, I'm going to make a note of that. I don't think I'm going to do that right now, but um, uh, let's see. So, uh, so. Is it too? I can see preferring. You say much prefer. I'm curious if there is, if you could elaborate on the much prefer there. Um, it and and whether it's more verbose, I think is perhaps debatable because then I'd have to create another layer of packetness or um, and. So uh, maybe I won't even bother with the to-do there because I don't think I would ever come back and do that. And I tend to just clutter up my code with to-dos that I never would deal with. So we're just going to let that go. That's going to be a thing. All done. Um, and then, um, so now we have the file ID. Yay. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I do, I genuinely appreciate the option because um, I hadn't thought about that as a way of dealing with it. I remembered looking up that you couldn't do it in a simple way. Um, but yeah, you could totally do it by having, moving the enum into the, um, uh, having the, sh the stuff that's shared in an outer struct and then the stuff that's different in an enum inside of that. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. I just don't think we'll do it here. So, um, so we have the file ID. Now, then the question is, have we seen this file before? So if map dot, uh, oh, if self dot map dot contains key file ID. And actually I want, if it does not contain the key, then we're going to need to add an entry to the map. So dot map dot add dot insert file ID and a new map, a new packet group. Packet group new file ID. So we'll hand it the file ID. Um, do we care? Does it care about that? I'm not sure it's going to care about that. Um, uh, 
Hmm. I do not know the streamer toggle bit, um, but I will make a note of that. Um, to be fair, I, I, I'm I'm sort of the worst sort of person in that I don't I haven't historically watched streams much at all. Um, and then I just I, I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube and some things on YouTube are Twitch streams turned into videos there. So like the Crust of Rust series um, I watched on YouTube, but I think Start Start Life is streams. I don't know if it's on Twitch or on YouTube, but somewhere. Um, uh, but so without being a very good stream watcher, I like jumped in and was like, I'm going to start generating content for people to watch. Um, which is kind of not really the best way to do things, but um, it was what I did, and here we are. So I'm not unhappy. And I've learned a lot, and I've gotten a lot of stuff done, so I'm happy about that. Um, uh, so uh, why is this grumpy? Expected, oh, expected a reference to you, eh? Okay. Uh... And why are you grumpy? Oh, because we haven't re the return. So if we just get do that, I think that'll take care of that problem. Um, or not. Uh, mismatch types. Oh, that's because I don't have a semicolon. Boop, boop, boop. And then new doesn't exist. I know that. Um, I'm not sure I need this necessarily. Does a packet group need to know its file ID? It may not. I'm going to have to take that out for now. And we can put it back in if we need it. Um, so we need new on a packet group. Um, so hub fun new returns self and for the moment we won't you're gonna have to put stuff there but it doesn't need to be there right now um, and then why are we grumpy here Oh yeah, sure. So process packet has to be mutable because self has to be mutable because we have to be able to update self because we're modifying the map that is inside of ourselves. So we have to be mutable for that to be possible. That makes sense. Okay. So at that point, and actually I'm wondering, is there uh map. I wonder if there was a, I could have avoided that if by like insert if not there or something. Um, yeah, that's not going to be what I want. Look at entry. La 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 la. Can't spell. Gets the key's corresponding entry for in place manipulation. And so, oh. Oh, so we could do or insert. Aha! Uh -huh. So we could get entry on the key or insert a value. Yes. Oh, very cool. Thank you, Agafa. I like that. I had a feeling this if was not what needed to happen. So, um, self dot lula dot map dot entry file ID or insert packet group new boom 
that goes away. Look at that. That is very shiny. Well done. Thank you, sir. Greatly appreciate that. That is that is nice. Um, is Clippy happy? That's a good question. I haven't been paying attention to it. So Clippy is grumpy about this. Why is Clippy grumpy about this? Um, should consider adding a default implementation for file manager. Why? I wonder. Um, and then it also does, um, yes, it does actually say th to use or insert with. Aha, uh -huh. that's clever. And then we don't actually call the function, we just give its name. And then it will call the function. Nice. And it also thinks that packet group ought to have a default. Um, and I don't think I've run into this warning. So it's basically saying if you have a new, it thinks you should have a default. I guess because you can and it's easy. Oh yeah, I have like all of the lints on. You know me, I'm just like... Um, uh, so I could, I am it doesn't hurt me to have the, def the default. So let's throw it in pub fun default. Oh, that would, that needs to be in its own impl, isn't it? Um, so it would be impl. Ah! Default for file manager. Um, fun default to self. Self colon 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 new. And then it wants me to do the same thing on packet group. Okay. Um, Oh, I could derive default and it would just do the right thing. Uh, I hadn't thought about that. Derive default. And then I could get rid of this. And Clippy is still happy. Good job. Oh, that's a better, much better solution. And then I could derive default on packet group two. And that will make Clippy not complain about that and I probably want like debugs um, yeah right I mean drive won't always work but um, in this case it should do me fine um, and that's better than um, oh so since new I get it since new takes no parameters it means that it can be used for the default. And so it's like, well, you should just go ahead and use that. Um, and I guess if we did something interesting here, then, um, well, actually, do we even need new here? Can we just call default instead of calling new? Um, since our new doesn't actually do anything except for the obvious empty um, initializations of all the pieces. And so we could we say instead of new, can you say default? Yeah. And then I don't actually need to have new anywhere. And I don't know about packet group yet. But at least at the moment, I don't need new here. Well, that's interesting. And really then, packet group probably doesn't need new. I bet it's not going to need new. I bet we can get away with 
just um, default here as well. Cool. Okay. Simplifying code is always good. Um, awesome. So now we have gotten the entry and that has returned the what are we returning here we don't have this doesn't have to have returned anything um oh that would be even better or default loving that because then we don't have to specify well done This is the, the, the Rust APIs, this like the iterator, that sort of thing, very rich APIs. There's a lot of stuff. And, and I think this is where I would say I'm kind of getting to be borderline competent in Rust, but not what I would describe as like, like good, whatever that means. In Rust is I think I would have to have a better handle on those APIs than I do right now. I spend too much time looking up syntax and looking up things in the APIs or having you tell me, because you're awesome, things in the APIs that I either didn't know about or had forgotten about. So that's nifty. So or default returns something, but I don't really care. And so now I can add um, well, actually, I do, do want to know what this returns. That returns a value, which is going to be the packet group. So, in fact, I ought to be able to do things like dot um, process packet uh, packet. and then implement process packet pub fun process packet packet of type packet and that doesn't return anything and that has a to do bang for now Oh, I forgot to have do self. Da, 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 da. So mute self actually, because it's going to need to change the change the packet group. And now, oh, look at that. That is very slick, actually. I like that a lot. Um, so like we we buried the conditional. Um, or default means we didn't have to provide a closure. Um, that's pretty slick. So we get the map. We get the entry for that file ID. If there it wasn't something, we put the default in, and then we call that process packet. That is very cool. I really like that a lot. Now, or default... Yeah, it inserts the default value. So the map will have that new value in it. That is really nice. I don't know that that's the easiest line to read if you don't know Rust. Um, but I really like it a lot. I think that's actually very, 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 very shiny. So thank you. Yay, team. And then write all files do i want to get into that right now or do i want to um deal with packet group stuff for a little bit 
Mm-hmm. What time is it? It is 3.30, 3.24. Let's actually do a little packet group fun because we have, we've, we've implied two functions here that we haven't dealt with because it'd be nice to to know that we're processing the packets correctly before we worry about writing them to files. Um, so received all packets. So a packet group has received all the packets when it knows how many it has, it needs, and when it has all of the ones that it needs. So we're going to need to keep track of the expected number of packets and the packets that we've actually received. So we're going to have to have expected number of packets. And that's going to be, I could say, U size for fun. Oh, no, actually, packet number has a type that we probably want to use here. Did I ever define packet number as a type? Doesn't look like I did. Um, so it's a U16. So we should never have more than U16. Uh, the expected number of packets? No. This is actually one of the things that we make deliberately annoying. So there are some parts to this that are sort of cre that I made to make things interesting for the students. Um, where, you know, interesting in faculty land means to be a pain in the butt for the students. But um, one of them is, and you could totally imagine that the header would say, by the way, Here's the file name and here's how many packets to expect. But we don't do that. We mark the last packet as being the last packet. So you have to actually keep track of whether you've seen the last packet and if you have um, what its value is. Now, one thing that that tells me, oh, that shouldn't be a semicolon, that should be a comma, um, is that this probably needs to be a sum because we won't know it right away. Um, it will uh, be something we will discover down the line and we need to keep track of, um, oh, it's option, not sum. Sum is the variant, duh. Um, and it's brackets, not parens, boom. There we go. So initially that's going to be none. We won't have seen what the expected number of packets is, but when we find it, then we can replace the none with the sum variant holding the number of packets. Um, so that actually will be a thing. And for the moment, I'll just say vec packet um, for the packets. I feel like we'll probably want a different data structure because I'll bet there's like a some kind of data structure that keeps things sorted by some value as you add things to it. Um, and if we did that, then we wouldn't have to sort at the end. Um, and that might be kind of nifty, but for now, I'll just do a vector of packets. And if you happen to know of such a data structure, feel free to let me know. I'm pretty sure I did some searching. I think I found something like that, but um, I don't know off the top of my head remember what it was. Um, so a B-tree set, doesn't that keep things in the order that you insert them? Whereas I want to keep them in order by a particular key. Rust B tree set. Um, So let's go here. Um, mm. 
I don't know. Um, off the top of my head. Um, ah, index set. That sounds, that sounds familiar. Rust index set. Hash set with the iteration is independent of their hash values. Yeah. And then we can sort by um, on a particular key. So that'd be a possibility. But for now, um, oh, and actually we should at a minimum make sure we, um, I'm just gonna put them in a back. We can always sort, it's not like it's hard. Um, and may, and I don't know, it might be more efficient to sort once at the end than to keep, um, yeah. Uh, oh, so we could do ORD on our type by um, packet number. That wouldn't be insane. Um, uh, oh, and actually these are all data packets. Um, and a packet group. So we're going to want to also keep track of the header packet information and a header. Whoa, go away. Um, a header packet. What does it know? It knows the file ID and the name. We don't care about the ID, but we do care about the name. So we're going to want a file name, which is going to be a string. Okay. And these will be data. Um, and so that's what we want is use crate packets data. Oh. So why did that not give me a auto fix? Is it because data is pub? Yeah, data is pub. I don't know. Why it didn't give me an auto? So I guess the fancy way to do this would be this way, and then have one line. Ah, boom. Okay. Um. So we're going to keep track of the name of the file, how many packets we're expecting when we know it. Oh, and we won't know the name right away either. So this is going to have to be an option because um, we won't know the file name until we see the header packet for this guy. And um, we won't know the expected number of packets until we see the data packet that holds the last packet. Um, and then we'll keep track of a vector of data packets. We don't care about, we won't need to keep the header packet around as a separate thing. Cool. So received all packets is going to be true when um, expected number of, oh, self expected number of packets dot is let me think do I want to just do an if let because I was going to do um, what does this do is some and and then we oh and then we only do that closure if the expected number has some property that's exactly what we want um, expected num uh, and we want to return expected num equal equal packets dot len self dot packets dot len
Oops, I did something wrong. Um, oh, it was nightly only. Oh, you're right. Oh, curses. Got excited. Um, so, so I could do this and, but then I'm going to have to get the thing out. So actually probably an if let makes more sense. So if let um, some expected number equals self dot expected number of packets, then return this. Otherwise, false. And why are we being grumpy? Oh, I can't use the same. No, I yeah, I used a different name. Whoa, what are you unhappy about? Oh. Len is you size. Ah, interesting. Interesting. So now the question is, I could change this to be you size and then promote up. I think maybe that's what I'm going to do. Uh, because then if we were to change the definition of the protocol so that we had more than two bytes for a packet number later on, we wouldn't need to change this. Um, so I think actually I'm going to make that a U size. And then we'll have to, when we find the, the last packet, um, we'll have to promote up. Okay, and then Wagafa, I was counting on you to come up with um, a way to do this. Um, oh, so actually map on, yeah, I gotta remember that you can map on things like options and results. So self, dot expected number of packets dot map and so now this is expected number um, and we have expected number equal equal self dot packets dot len and we don't need the as because of the other change um, and now dot unwrap for default. And unwrap or default returns the default value of the type oh yeah thank you now that requires knowing that the default value of boolean is gonna be false and that seems to me to be I mean, at least that's not obvious to me. I'm willing to believe that it's true, but alternatively, we could say unwrap or false, right? Um, which I wonder if um, Clippy doesn't like that. That's an interesting question. Um, Clippy, what do you think? You happy? 
Clippy is happy with that. Interesting. I thought maybe Clippy would um, be like, oh, you should use default there instead of unwrap or. Um, but okay, I, I think I like that better just because then I don't have to know what the default for a Boolean is, which seems semi-arbitrary um, in this instance. I mean, I presume everything defaults to zero basically and zero is the internal representation of false, so it kind of makes sense. I think that's what Java does, is its default value for Booleans is false. Um, but it doesn't kill me to sort of say it explicitly here. And I like that map, that's kind of nifty. So after the map, we'll either still have none, or we'll have a sum, but it will contain this Boolean instead of the number and then we will unwrap that sum or get false. That was very cool. If it was not copy, then it would have suggested unwrap or else. Oh. Oh. So this is actually copying things. Ah, so it eagerly evaluates the false here, but that doesn't matter because evaluating false is irrelevant. But if we had something more complicated, then we could use unwrap or else, and it would only evaluate the closure if it had to um, uh, and leave it alone otherwise. But since we've just got false here, we're good. Okay, I like that. That's cool. Um, and so now I think that is received all packets. So we've, we know what the expected number of packets is and it's equal to the number of packets that we've seen. I think that's nifty. So now process packet, this will be where there's a little more action. So we're gonna have to split on whether packet is um, a header or a data packet. Um, ooh. Oh, that's sort of weird. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, so if you put, oh, okay, hang on. I'm just sort of curious. And I don't have any tests, so that makes all of this uh, awkward. I've, I've got tests for the packet stuff, but I don't have any tests here. And maybe I really should. Um, but, but your suggestion is basically to return uh, self dot expected number of packets equal equal uh, sum self dot packets dot len. That's very shiny, actually. And so presumably the compiler is going to turn that into something like first checking to see if this is a sum. And if it is, then checking to see if the contained values are the same. Um, and it's all in one line. That's very nice. I like that actually. Good catch. I think I'm going to go with that one. I'm going to keep this one here commented out just because I want to, I think I do want to write some tests at some point and, and I want to, it'd be nice to confirm that both of those pass and yada, yada, yada. But, um, we've only got 15 minutes, so I'm not going to mess with that right now. Um, so then process packet we're gonna have to match uh, on packet, and we're gonna have a header and a data, data. So we're gonna have something like that, and 
the logic in these is going to be somewhat complicated. So trying to do it all in here probably doesn't ma make sense. So I think having um, things like process header packet header. Well, I guess it would be self dot and self dot process data packet data. And then this is grumpy because we have to import something. And this is grumpy for the same reason. Oh. Oh, interesting. In, so you're suggesting get rid of that and instead say packet colon colon header and packet colon colon data. Hmm, I like that. I think that makes a lot of sense. And then we'll have, and these don't need to be public because they'll only be called from inside packet group, process, header packet, self, to do bang, process, data packet, self, to do bang. And those are actually both going to need to be mute because they're going to involve changing things inside the packet. Um, oh, and that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, hmm. Is this the right? Yeah. Okay, that's the right thing. Okay, that's cool. Um, and so, uh, why are you fussy? Oh, I didn't pass in the things. Uh, header. header but here again the argument could be um, well actually okay you say it would clash with data data being something other than this data here which is just the packets data I mean, I think I like the way this reads better, to be honest with you. Oh. Yeah, I sort of, I kind of like the reading here. And I wonder if, it would make more sense to actually force this because I do kind of like reading out loud here. Oh, can't do that? Oh, it's packets. 
Oh, it's going to be. What? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Right, 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 right. This is a variant in an enum. This is a struct. And so it would have to be packets data. And it doesn't even like that. Yeah, okay. So I think I was up a tree there. Let's undo our way back to that universe. Um, yeah, so this is an enum. That's a variant inside of that enum. This is a struct. Yeah, all is well. Um, program too much today, apparently. There, there is an upper bound on how much brain space I can manage. Um, okay. So then I think this is, takes care of this. I don't need any more to do action there. So if we find the header packet, then we want self dot file name to equal header dot blur. Why is this not? Find, finding things. Oh, I bet I don't have a, I probably don't have a method or anything. And header probably doesn't have that as public. Uh-huh. Do I want to make these public or do I want to have methods that return the fields? Um, do I think I care? What did I do in main? How did I get the, oh, in file manager, so that's where that would be. In, oh, because file ID was defined at the packet level. But that would make it seem at least consistent to have methods to get. I, I don't know. I don't know that I need it. I think we can just get away with. Uh, you think so? I think methods would be the thing to do. So we would say impl header um, pub fun file name cell return string uh, self dot file name. Now we probably don't really want a string here because we would lose ownership of it. But it doesn't seem to be unhappy. Hmm. Oh, right, because it's an option. Oh, mm -hmm -hmm. So we need some, because we know we've now found the file name. So we're going to replace the file name field with a sum variant wrapped around that string. Well, that's cool. Now, why are you grumpy? Aha! Because that, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think we want to probably return this. And then uh, we would borrow. And then here. Um, oh, yeah. Although, could, couldn't we, couldn't we make that this? Now we're gonna have to do some lifetime fun, but 
Oh, with it, no, actually, that's not going to work because the packet will go away. Once we're done with a header packet, we don't need to keep it anymore. So, um, although, can we say like? this that now a packet group's gonna have to oh, I guess that that really only matters here so we want to pull that out into its own impl And, oh, do I have to have that? Oh, I do. Oh, fine. So actually, I did need this. In which case, this could have been up there anyway. Fine, 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 fine. And now, why are we grumpy? Oh, impl tick A. <laughs> um so I would put pub crate file name string. I don't know that I understand what the pub crate file name string um and we could clearly just clone the header. Right? I mean this isn't there's gonna be one header per file. This isn't gonna be a big deal. Um, but, oh, and we will have to copy, no, yes, we will have to copy the packets. Um, Oh, right. So this is an owned header, which is correct because we don't need anybody else to have it after we're done processing it. Um, I guess I still don't get the pub crate file name string. I'm not sure where what that is and where it goes I'm lost on that and I assume you say this sounds like a terrible plan you're referring to my um, lifetime stuff I think um, everything compiles now oh no file manager doesn't compile uh, compile manager presumably doesn't file compile because of lifetimes. Um, so on the struct, oh, pub crate on the field. So you're saying do pub crate here like that. And then we don't even need this anymore. Because we're in the crate, so we ought to be able to go and grab it. And then all this lifetime stuff goes away. And this just becomes a string again. And this goes away. And that goes away. And 
this just becomes header file name. Aha. Uh -huh. And so we haven't actually cloned anything because we own the header. We didn't pass a reference to the header. We actually took ownership of the header here, which means we can take ownership of the file name component of the header, put it in this, put it in that, and we're good. And now the header is no longer available to anybody else. And so the fact that we stole that memory doesn't cause any problems to anyone. That's very cool. Now, I think we're going to run into an issue when we get to data because data is going to get a slice out of the buffer and we are going to have to copy that memory um, or we're going to have a problem. But I think Russ will yell at us in the appropriate places when we get there. Um, so I think that's all we need to do with the header packet because the file ID we've already used and and I didn't realize that pub crate like this was a thing I think that's part of why I was confused um, uh, so I didn't get that that was syntax that existed in the world I'm sure I've seen it but it didn't register with me as a thing um, so really I think that's all that has to happen when we process a header packet um, and it's now four o'clock so I think I could call that a thing. Um, so we've got to do process data packet next time. So next Saturday, um, we'll do process data packet, um, which I think will be a little more interesting because I think we are going to have to do some kind of copying of memory so that we copy out of the slice that we get um, and into something else i wonder if did we although did we do that what do we do with, with data packet we uh oh we actually converted that to a vec which probably copied that data oh so actually we've already dealt with that this actually solved that problem. So I think that, that, that processing the vectors will be easy. I think it'll be just pop it in the packets, check to see if it's the last one and update this accordingly, and then pro pop, it, pop it in the packets. I'm actually tempted to just do that because I think this is gonna be not hard. Um, maybe deconstruct the data so that we don't store the file ID. Oh, because we'll have a vec of data and we'll be making a ton of copies of this. Oh, so we really don't even want, data's wrong here. We don't want a vector of all of this. We want a vector of vec-u-8s is all we want. So this should really just be a vec of U8s. So we want a collection of vectors of U8s. And that's all we're gonna need there. And the rest of that stuff gets put somewhere else or thrown away, um, depending on whether it's important or not. Um, so what all do we have in a data thing? So I'm gonna just grab this. And plop it here just for my own reference. So we want to, uh, we don't care about the file ID. We do care about, oh, the packet number. So actually, this really should be like a hash map from packet number to the VAC. Yeah. Oh, and then we avoid sorting altogether because we could just take a range from zero to the last thing and go into the hash map and get the appropriate packet. And that will give them to us in the right order. 
because we know packet numbers start at zero. Oh, so I think we could just do hash map u8. No, packet numbers are u16. u16 to vector of u8. And why are we fussy? Oh, just can't find hash map. Fine. And so then down here, we can packets dot insert data dot packet number oh, self dot packets wah, wah, wah. data dot packet number uh, data dot data yeah we're not happy why are we not happy oh it's private da, 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 da. hmm I wonder if the use crate trick because we actually want to just take ownership of this vector so the pub crate Thing seems like a good idea here. Um, sort of less exciting here, but sure, why not? And then why not? We'll go all in. Um, so that does that. And so that takes care of the packet number. And so, and then we got to check the is last packet. And so if we think about what we did up here, oh no, that's not really relevant. Maybe. So uh, if is last packet, then data dot, Hang on, doing this wrong. If data dot something, yeah, data dot is last packet, then self dot expected number of packets equals data dot packet number plus one because if there are five packets they're going to be zero through four so the packet number of the last packet is going to be one less than what we needed and i really need to have some tests on this or i'm going to get killed um uh oh that's an option so it needs to be a sum and this is where I'm going to have to uh, promote up because this is a U16 and we want that to be U5. Oh, why are we fussy? Oh, because you probably just promoted the one to it. There we go. Yeah. I think that takes care of everything because we don't care about the file ID. We've used the packet number to put the data in and we've used the packet number to figure out the is last packet. Yeah, I think that's it. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, come on. Boom. I should really write some tests. But we're out of time. We've actually run long. I should stop. Um, for some of you, it's getting later in the day. Um, so we should get out of here. Uh, but I think we're actually pretty close. So I think, I think I should have some tests, but I think that if packet group is right, then 
all of this is done and we ought to be able to actually this should do everything except for write the files out so like among, among other things that ought to terminate now let's see if i run code with the to do that will panic yeah okay so that would just die if i tried to actually call write all files um in main so if i commented that out i think at a minimum i think we would terminate the odd lengths are the short packets of which there will be probably three that was probably the last of the short packets oh no the header packets are going to be short too so the last packets and the header packets will be short um so there's probably six of those uh, now the question is are we, oh there we are should have put a print statement in to make it clear when we actually gotten out of that while loop because right now we have no way of knowing the difference between oh hey it terminated okay that's a good sign because that means we must have <coughs> that received all packets was true which means that all the packet groups thought they received all the packets which means we process the header pack, uh, the last packet for all three of them. Um, and so they should all have file names as well. So that's cool. I think that that is at least a loose support for the idea that this might be correct, fingers crossed. Um, really need tests when you've got a, a edge case like this. This is because the compiler is not going to help us any there. Um, we'll get some kind of runtime error when we loop over the packets to write them out if that's wrong. Um, so we really need to test there. But it's quarter past. I'm going to stop. Um, you are awesome human beings. Go team. Uh, so I think that um, writing the the writing some tests and writing write all files um, shouldn't take all that long. So I think this is likely to be done in the next session. Um, Cause I don't think write all files is going to be that big a deal. Um, we just have to open the file and write out the, vec the various vectors. Um, I don't think that's going to be very difficult. So I think we should be good um, probably by next time. So then I have to think about what that... Um, <laughs> uh, what that what we're going to do with this slot after that. So I have to do a little thinking about that. Um, but I think this is very cool. And I'm very happy. So thank you all. You're awesome. Um, I hope it's not too late where you live. And thank you for the comments and the suggestions. The code is definitely better for the many things that you shared, as is always true. Um, and I will, so I'll be back. So today's Saturday. We'll have ice repos on Tuesday morning from 10 to noon. Um, then we'll have evolution computation again on Wednesday night from 7 to 9 because I need to make sure that people like Azitsu stay up all night, uh, especially when they're sick, because that's always a good plan. Sorry. Um, and then back here a week from today with ice refobes in the morning and um, finishing this up in the afternoon. So awesome, awesome. Um, uh, the... The Discord invite link um, is there. It's also in the QR code. 
I don't think it was last time. I don't think I'd updated this to an active link, but I think that the QR code works now and that should work since I just grabbed it out of Discord. Um, so feel free to do that. Um, and otherwise, I will let you all go. I will commit and push. Um, and I will see everybody later. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Ciao.